Hey guys and welcome to another video here on our channel The Guide. I'm Benjamin also known as Taz and today I have the ultimate guide on the standing tackle. This is an essential tool in your defense to get the ball possession from the opponent and in this video we cover everything around it. So how to do it but then also in what kind of situations you should use it, what you should be looking out for and also when not to use it. This video is very detailed so I don't want to talk any longer in the introduction but make sure to watch it till the end for a bonus tip. But before we start, I want to briefly remind you about our online course at which we provide you additional tips how you can improve in FIFA. In 25 videos, it covers aspects about how to train, analyze your game, find your own playstyle and much more. This will not only help you in FIFA 20, but still be helpful for FIFA 21. If you're interested, use the link in the video description to get 20% off. And now everything around the standing tackle. We are starting this tutorial with the basics about the standing tackle. So what to press and specifically how. Because we get a lot of questions about this by you guys. By default you tackle by pressing the circle or B button. Most of the time this leads to an animation in which your player performs a standing tackle in which he reaches out with one leg. But the specific action is always contextual, meaning it depends on your position, the opponent's position and where the ball is. When you're in a running duel and chasing from behind, your player rather starts pulling on the opponent instead of doing a standing tackle. We also have a specific video on how to behave in running duels and the use of the tackling button in those situations. So to get to know more about this, you can click in the top right corner or the link in the video description. In this tutorial, we primarily focus on the actual standing tackle action by your player. This happens when your opponent is in front of you or to your side and you have a chance to challenge the ball. But this doesn't exclude that sometimes your player also uses his body to get to the ball when you press the standing tackle button. As previously mentioned, the specific action is contextual and over time you get a feeling for it. When you want to specifically practice this, there's a skill game at which you can train the standing tackle situation. It's also worth mentioning that the use of the tackling button is a little bit different when you use the option Legacy Defending, which you can choose in the controller settings. But as you have to use the setting Tactical Defending when playing online, we only talk about the standing tackle, how it is performed with this setting. So when you want to reach out with the standing tackle to challenge the ball, you press the standing tackle button. You can also charge up your tackling to increase the reach. We are going to explain this in more detail at the end of the video. For now, focus on tackling by pressing the button for only like half a second, a little bit longer than just a tap. While you do that, you determine with the left stick in which direction you want to do your standing tackle. But don't think too much about this. Most of the time you just tackle in that direction how you approach the ball and the opponent before doing the tackle. So you can just keep it like that. But you want to connect your tackle with the ball, not the opponent, since your goal is to get control over the ball. So when you approach the opponent, you do it in a way that you go there where the ball is or is going to be. We are going to explain this in detail in the next section. If you feel unsure about the direction with the left stick, pay attention to the displayed controller on the bottom. This is the live input while I was playing and you can see exactly how I was doing it in that moment in terms of direction and also all the other input. On that note, you will notice that I use a lot of jockey defending, L2 or LT and fast jockey, L2 plus R2 or LT plus RT. This is an essential tool to get yourself in a proper defending position. As positioning is a key element of hitting your tackles, we highly recommend to watch our video on jockey defending. Now after we have set the basics, we want to dive a little bit deeper into when to actually use the tackle function. To understand when to go for a tackle, you first have to understand what you accomplish with that. First of all, you increase your reach with your defending player as he starts a movement with his leg to reach out and challenge for the ball. This sounds trivial, but it's very important to understand when to tackle and when not. Because you suddenly reach out with a leg, you increase your reach to get to the ball. This means that this is a move to put pressure on the opponent. If you don't use the tackle button at all, his risk of losing the ball to you wouldn't be as high since he could only watch your positioning and as long as he isn't getting really close to you, you would have no chance to get to the ball. But with a standing tackle, you have a tool to basically jump on the opponent. Therefore he has to be more cautious how he is dribbling or controlling the ball because otherwise you get the ball. This leads us to the key question. When do we use the standing tackle button? Simply put, there are two cases. One, you're very certain where the ball is going to be in a few moments. Two, you're rather desperate. 
Let's start with one, meaning you're very certain where the ball is going to be. How do we do this? Two things, ball contacts as a limiting factor and anticipation of the opponent's next action. We mentioned this in quite a few tutorial videos, but ball contacts are one of the most fundamental aspects of FIFA. As the player with the ball, you can only change direction or perform an action when the player is touching the ball. We explained the importance of this concept in a separate video. As usual, you can get to it by clicking now in the top right corner or the link in the video description. Because we want to go with the tackles in the direction where the ball is going to be, for us it's the best way to go for a tackle when the opponent has a longer pause between these ball contacts because then he can't change direction or get the ball away. As you can see by the examples running in the background, the tackles are always performed when the opponent is in between ball contacts or right about his next contact. We're going to explain the best situations when to apply this in a bit. But first, let's talk about the second aspect, anticipation. This means we anticipate the opponent's next action and when we make the right choice, we are able to go with the tackle in the direction at which the ball is going to be put next by the opponent. This could be for example that we understand that the opponent is going to turn in a different direction and we therefore do the tackle in the direction that he will turn to. Obviously this is much more risky because you have to understand what options your opponent has and read your opponent's thoughts on this. It's the best when you combine these two aspects together. So let's talk about the best situations in which you can perform a successful tackle. The first one is while your opponent controls the ball after receiving a pass. A lot of my successful tackles come from this situation, because both aspects mentioned come together very nicely here. When your opponent controls the ball, he is very limited in terms of ball contacts, meaning he doesn't have a lot of them and is rather limited in his actions. Additionally, you can read quite well how he wants to develop his play from here, so where are his next options to play a pass and so on. This leads to a better anticipation on your side. For example, in this situation, my opponent plays a pass to Neymar and I anticipate that he wants to develop his play forward into the direction of my goal, meaning he's going to turn in that direction. Even before he actually starts to turn, I already start my tackle with Boateng, and in the moment he turns forward, I'm already there to dispossess him of the ball before he has his second ball contact. In this case, reading his options and upcoming action combined with a decisive tackle got me the ball. Another typical situation is after your opponent changed his direction. After a direction change, the opponent's player has to shift his physical momentum, accelerate while he pushes the ball forward. This also leads to a longer pause in terms of ball contacts and you know what this means. Easy pickings for us with a standing tackle. In this situation, my opponent does a turn to the upside and then right away initiates another turn to the downside. Because he does it in a way at which the ball is open and accessible for me, I immediately start to challenge the ball by pressing tackle. Because in this moment, I know that due to his turn, the opponent is more static and it's going to take a bit longer for the opponent's player to have his next ball contact to get the ball away from me. At last, we have situations which by default also mean that the opponent has less often a ball contact. Namely, he's sprinting with the ball. This also leads to longer pauses between the ball contacts and therefore it's also easier to anticipate where the ball is going to be in a few moments. So another good opportunity for us to challenge the ball with a standing tackle. Here my opponent is running down the wing. You can already see the longer time periods between the ball contacts. Then he takes another touch with full sprint, pushing the ball forward and also turning a bit to the inside. This is a moment at which I notice I'm close enough with my player to tackle the ball before my opponent is going to have the next ball contact. As I'm really close, my player focuses more on using his body to ensure the gained ball possession instead of primarily tackling the ball. At the end I had an easy situation to dispossess my opponent. So these were the situations at which we were very certain. But we can also use the standing tackle when we are rather desperate to get to the ball. Here we also have some different situations that we briefly cover. The first one is to challenge from the side when you're really close with an additional player. If performed correctly, there isn't much harm to go for a tackle from the side when you're really close to the ball. But it's important to use a player that is extra, meaning he isn't a key part of your defensive line. We are going to talk about this in more detail later. But as you can see, I try to challenge the ball several times from the side. I don't succeed, but I make sure that I give my opponent a hard time always putting pressure on him. There is also a chance that this tackle helps you to block the pass, leading to a mix between a tackle and control deflection to a teammate. That's why it can also be worth to press the tackle button in the moment your opponent passes the ball away. Then we also have the last resort tackles. 
You notice that the situation is getting very uncomfortable, you're losing control over the situation and you feel that the opponent is close to break through. Now it can be the time to trust your instincts and go for an all or nothing move with your defender. The concepts about ball contacts and anticipation apply as previously explained, but you can't wait for the perfect moment anymore, but instead just go for it when you see the chance. In this situation my opponent plays a pass to a striker inside the box which has a lot of space. It's obvious that he is going to shoot with his next contact after controlling the ball. My only chance to prevent this from happening is to go for a tackle to get to the ball before my opponent gets a shot off. I tackle, get a clear and good contact to the ball and was able to clear the situation at the last second. At last we have the tackle button to block shots. Going for active tackles actually increases your chance of blocking shots as your player starts to reach out with his leg. So when you fear that your opponent will shoot, for example inside the penalty box, you try to maneuver your player into the way of the shot on goal and hit the tackle button. Sometimes you can pull off some very nice saves and spare your goalkeeper some trouble. And we all know how valuable this can be. So a lot of good reasons to use the tackle button, right? But as always, nothing comes without some downfalls and as already hinted, there are some things that you should keep in mind before going crazy with a tackling button. Namely, there are some disadvantages of a poorly performed tackle. First of all, you can overcommit with your player when you don't connect with the ball or the opponent's player. In the worst case, taking your player out of play for one or two seconds. Doesn't sound so bad? Look at my innocent and rather desperate tackle with Boateng here. I tried to intercept the pass and with a tackle increase my chance of this happening, but I fail. See how he is stuck in that motion, leaving him behind while my opponent continues with his attack. In the end, it leaves a gap in my defensive line which I have to hustle quite hard to not concede from this situation. But we also have to mention that in FIFA 20 most of the time you can recover quite quick from a bad standing tackle. Nevertheless, you should try to be rather sure about it before going for it. Or at least do it with a player which you can compensate in your defensive concept. So for example a striker, attacking midfielder or when you have a teammate backing you up behind you. These are the situations at which you can manage a rather poorly timed tackle. Another disadvantage is that if you don't respect the ball control or abilities of your opponent, you're risking a foul when going for a standing tackle. You go in at the wrong time, your opponent turns, gets the ball away and all you connect is with the opponent's player. Leading to a foul, maybe a booking or in the worst case scenario a penalty. I for myself refrain from using the standing tackle most of the time inside the box, because you can give away a penalty quite easily. The FIFA 20 meter is a lot about having very agile and strong dribblers inside the box to create chances. Falling for those turns and going in with tackles can be very risky. Instead try to hold back and control these situations with jockey defending and good positioning. In general this is the approach, doesn't matter we are in the box or not. Part of our defensive concept is to rather wait patiently as long as we don't see a clear chance to actively challenge the ball. As long as you are in front of the opponent, you are an obstacle for your opponent that he has to overcome. Don't make it easy for him by rushing out and setting a tackle into the void. In this context we also have to mention the ability to get the ball without actually using the tackle button. This is super important in FIFA 20. When you position yourself good or your opponent is rather careless in his dribbling, your player challenges the ball when he is really close and very confident that he will get the ball, without you actually pressing the tackle button. This way is much less risky because the active motion only happens when there is a super high chance of getting to the ball. So there's a lot of value of using that jockey defending to get a proper positioning and being in the way of your opponent without actually overcommitting. At the end we have a more advanced technique how you can modify your tackles a bit. Since a couple of years you can charge up your tackles similar to passes and shots. When you use this your player performs the tackle with more decisiveness. It increases the reach and is going to force it a bit more to get to the ball. In the background you can see several situations in which I use the charge up tackle as you can see by the bar under the player. These kind of tackles are an option when you see an opening to get to the ball but in this moment you're not as close to the ball as you wish for. With a fully charged up tackle you increase your reach forcing your player onto the ball. Sometimes I don't even plan this ahead but I instinctively press the tackle button and just notice during the tackle that the ball gets really far away but I have already committed for my tackle. Then I use the charge up tackle to get everything in as much as I can.
But you also have to keep in mind that the downside of a missed tackle is even worse for a charge up tackle. So when you go all in and then miss, it will take longer for this player to recover, taking him out of play for a longer time. Despite that, I have to say that overall these charge up tackles are a tool which is probably undervalued and not used as often as it should be. Alright, this was a lot of information. At the end we want to summarize the content of this video and put it all together so you understand how you should behave in defense and how you can incorporate the standing tackle in your defensive arsenal. In general, you want to have a high success rate with your tackles. This means you focus on your defensive stability in terms of positioning and not over committing by using the jockey defending. As we showed earlier, this can already deliver you a lot of ball possessions as your player is going to tackle automatically when he has a chance. But when you notice that there is an opening to get to the ball because your opponent has a larger distance to the ball, you can use the tackle button to rapidly close the gap and actively challenge for the ball. Ball contacts and anticipation of the opponent's next actions are the key aspects. By focusing on these aspects, we want to create situations of high quality tackles. This means you want to have a clear opening or clear contact to the ball with your player. The cleaner your tackle is in terms of execution, the higher the chance that this tackle will actually get you the ball possession. We know that this is always a huge controversial in FIFA that a lot of people complain about rebounds after tackles. And yes, sometimes you can do everything right and in the end you won't end up with the ball. But more often this is due to the fact that the tackles weren't clean enough, not a clear contact or chance to get to the ball. Maybe just getting barely with a feet to the ball. The better and clearer you get to the ball, the higher the chance that you have success with your tackle. Another factor is the standing tackle attribute of your player. The higher this is, the more composed his tackles are in terms of getting control of the ball and you also have a higher reach when you actively tackle, but also when you just position yourself for the auto tackles as previously explained. Going for high quality tackles is the approach when you're not in danger of conceding, but sometimes the situation in your defense can get out of control. Then you have to lower your requirements a bit. You can't wait for the perfect opening, but instead strike with a tackle when you get the opportunity to do so. But as previously mentioned, these kind of tackles have a higher chance of getting outplayed by the opponent or ending up with a foul. At the end, this is the price you have to pay for taking a higher risk. So that's it for the standing tackle. Thanks for your attention. If this video was helpful for you, please drop a like and also don't forget to subscribe to keep updated about our upcoming tutorial videos. At the moment, 85% of our viewers aren't subscribed to our channel. Come on, you can't do this to us. At the end, we would like to thank our Patreon Elite supporters. If you want to support our channel and also get some cool benefits, check out the link to our Patreon site in the video description. Thanks for your attention, keep a clean sheet. I'm out.